According to Guardian newspapers, it states that a recent update by the president of the Nigerian Medical Association, Francis Fadou Yile, that out of 75,000 Nigerian doctors registered with the Nigerian Medical Association, over 33,000 have left the country, leaving behind only about 42,000 of men. Um, all health institu institutions in the country of over 200 million people. Now, this is really scary, but the health sector is also making some progress, like separation of the conjoint teams that successfully happened recently by a 78 member team in Abuja and first kidney transplant um, at NISA Premier Hospital, also at Abuja. How can the health sector be improved upon? Remilekun Oniide is a medical doctor licensed by the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria and has experienced working in the government hospitals before moving on to working for a private hospital. She's a licensed basic life support and advanced cardiac okay cardiac <laughs> life support provider by the american heart association and she's also a mental health enthusiast and a volunteer at postpartum support network africa remember you can join the conversations tweet to us at plus tv africa or at ways your africa one with the hashtag ways or sms 081 Thanks for joining us, Dr. Remy. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, all these medical things, they're too, they're very, very, very heavy in, in the mouth, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so you pardon my mispronunciations or whatever. Okay. Um, I think I will let Isi go first because she had an interesting question for you. <laughs> Absolutely. When I saw your profile, I was wondering, cardiac support, I was wondering, what does it mean? So what is cardiac life support and what are the challenges around it? Okay, first, it's called Advanced Cardiac Life Support. Um, okay. It is like a service we render during emergencies, like maybe somebody is involved in a road traffic accident. So what are the things that you're supposed to do when you meet that kind of patient in the emergency room? Yeah. So at first, you want to call for help because if, for instance, maybe that is happening on the roadside, you want to call for help. So an ambulance is coming while at that point in time you're giving first aid to that patient because time is of utmost importance exactly. for that patient. So if you lose time not doing anything for that patient, you might that patient might die before getting to the hospital. So basically advanced cardiac life support is making sure that the respiratory system, the cardiac system is functioning to a large extent before the patient is transported to So while in hospital. transit, yes. you just keep, give that support? Yeah, so, so it like comprises of like, okay, at that point in time, you're giving oxygen, CPR. you're doing CPR, okay. and so things like that. Like you're giving an IV. Yes, doctors too are involved in, in it. paramedics, yes. okay. So you're yep. giving IV access, giving mm. fluid while transporting the patient to So proper I was just going to lean on her second question is, how is that working? Because you see, Hmm. Someone just maybe passes out in public, and you see the way everybody just goes around the, the way they manhandle. They bring your phone and they start recording. Yeah, apart, that one is another sickness. <laughs> but the way they manhandle, you know, the, the body or the person. So, what are we doing, you know, to create awareness for this? Okay, um, well, unfortunately, there's not a lot um, happening in raising awareness about this. Because I personally, why I took the course is just because I, I like to learn and it was very, when I went for the course, it was very insightful for me because I did it after I had worked, that was after my um, housemanship. And seeing it, I was like, wow, so things can actually work like this. Why don't we do things like that in the hospital or when we find emergencies or accidents and all, but I just realized that it's, it's a problem with the infrastructure. We don't have a lot of things, doctors don't have a lot of things to work with. So it's quite difficult giving that kind of um, service because most of the time when you're giving that type of service, you need a defibrillator. So in most public hospitals, before you might get to see a defibrillator, it might take a while, maybe just have one. So it's, it's really a, 
um, um, it's yes, it's a struggle and it's a system problem. So that makes it quite difficult. So you, I'm licensed for it. So if I'm if I work in a place where I don't have the tools, oh. then I can't provide because that. You are as good as useless to, yes. to to the patient. Yeah. So first of all, let me ask you: Are you running away? <laughs> Please, it on national TV. <laughs> that's I, always an option when I. Ha, oh my God, <laughs> when I saw the figures. The numbers of doctors, you know, and this is not, it happens, that I know many, many of my friends, you know, they are in Germany, they are in the US, you know, we have some even in South Africa, yeah. in Ghana, everybody's just anywhere but Nigeria, you know, and that is a big issue for us. And we're complaining about the healthcare sector. As a medical doctor, because you have worked in the, the public health sector, like before moving to a private clinic, what do you think the main challenge is? that makes it difficult for doctors to function here in Nigeria. And you know, they are they are always running. Is it just about the money? No. You see this is like is multifactorial. So for a Nigerian doctor, one of the challenges we face is like I said, the system thing. So most doctors feel handicapped. You have a lot of knowledge, but you don't have the tools, the tools to work with and I think in Nigeria a lot of people don't understand this so that's why most of the time when things happen we now eventually blame the doctors that is one apart that's the system thing not having the tools also doctor we don't have enough doctors in Nigeria like you, the statistics no, is we have 72,000 yeah. doctors Are registered they really? Are they really and you can imagine Nigeria? that's like t to 200 million <laughs> um, <laughs> Nigerians. What's supposed to be the standard so the, for doc, doctor it, patient? It should be one to five hundred patients. But so now in Nigeria we have like one to two thousand to five thousand. Oh, well, the last the last the doctors doctors actually are yeah. actually overworked. I yes. think uh -huh. the bottom line. So Somebody gave a figure that it's actually like one to six thousand. Yes. In fact, in my head, it's one to one million. <laughs> <laughs> so you yeah. see, so doc, we don't have enough doctors. Doctors are overworked. You don't have the tools to work with, and also you. Do, everybody wants good remuneration for work done. So uh, that is another problem. The remuneration is not, um, is not enough. So you're doing so much work for very little. You're earning very little. So an average Nigerian doctor has to practically hustle to put food on their table, especially people who have families and things like that. So. OK. Oh. That, this brings Wait, me um, to. Sorry. Um, sorry. Okay. I was, um, AK was going to ask. I was going to ask a question about the budget, but I give up because she's just explained it all. And as I said earlier, we have budgeted, I think, in for 2020 about less roughly 450 billion, but more than 60 or 70 percent of it is recurrent, recurrent expenditures. So they're paying for full salaries and yeah. all that. There's little money Left. to actually improve and the get it into. And she just hit the nail on the head. So you have all the skills, you, ha you know what to do, but you don't have the tools to do it. It's so disheartening. And, and I think that there's been, like in the news recently, there's been just a lot of talk telling the government to please look at the budget, look at what we are assigning to the, the health sector. Health. Mm. And, and I think that we should start considering looking for but no, other avenues apart from the government. Now so, she's talking yes. finance. You've worked in two different sectors. What would you really what say? Would you really say? That are you doing, you know, financially better in this segment? I mean, in this new private sector compared to where you were? No, not necessarily. You know, no. it's, a, it's it's like there's a standard. So every there's it's really not there's no so much difference. Okay. There's no so much difference from what you get, what you earn working in the public sector and working in the private sector. What about the infrastructure? So when you go to the you know, private sector, do they have better um, equipment? Do they have better you know, services or things that could just give you an assurance? Is there a difference? Is there a marked difference? OK, now it depends. Now, so for private, it, you know, for the private sector, it depends on who their target um, customers okay. are. So for people who their target customers are the elites you have better infrastructures in those kinds of places because number one healthcare is not cheap do you understand yeah. so to if, 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 to get good health care in a private hospital you have to pay so so much money and how many Nigerians can actually, can actually afford, afford it yeah. now so, coming to uh, sorry finish. so just um, 
so the private so a private hospital that their target market is the elites usually have better infrastructures than um, other it just depends who your um, target, target customers are. Mm -hmm. Okay so this brings me to the question of um, NIHS which is the National Health Insurance Scheme which was introduced in 2005 by the federal government yeah. so um, how effective has it been in Nigeria currently because a lot of uh, a lot of people in Nigeria are not aware of this so how effective has it been has it been a failure in Nigeria currently? Okay, I won't say the scheme has been a failure because um, I think it's a work in progress. So it's something people are beginning to embrace. So like um, um, companies or where people work just um, put their employees under the scheme and they um, pay f a certain amount monthly or yearly to um, assess health services okay. at any time they want, maybe including their spouse, their children, and things like that. But the problem is that do are many Nigerians aware of how they can go about it because for instance the NHIS is not only restricted to people who are working, also people who do not have jobs or students and think, um, p um, students, they yeah. can assess this um, scheme. But I think the information is just not out there. And mm. you know, again, Nigerians need to understand, I don't think Nigerians exactly believe so much in the health system. So. In, is a struggle now telling them, oh, pay this amount of money because you come to the hospital and are not necessarily satisfied. So it's it's just a work I, in I think progress. it's beyond the health sector. Yeah. So, so, so Nigerians so, don't really believe in insurance. They don't believe yeah. in, in any insurance, insurance at all. But if you had one thing that you would fix today in our healthcare sector in Nigeria, what would that be? What would that? It would be, be difficult to answer. Yes, because, because there's, there's, a lot. Yes. there's a lot. Yeah. But if there's you say that, okay, at least if this is in place, you know, it will go this far in it the healthcare sector. It will have a ripple sector. effect yeah. on the others. Um, having the tools to work with, just having a favorable. So it um, still goes back to the condition, the infrastructure. Yes, yeah. just having the tools to work with, and having. It's, it, I can't really even pick one. I can't pick one. <laughs> wow. There's, there's Have you ever had an overwhelming case in Nigeria? You know, with your experience in the, especially in the private hospital. I mean, sorry, the government hospitals. Oh yes, because you know sometimes I like we. Doctors that work in the public sector usually are very are usually overworked. I can remember one time, you know, when you do calls, and it means that you're you're working from 8 a.m. till the next morning, and at some sometimes we'll have to run clinics. So I was working 8 a.m. the previous day. I'm still at work as at 4 p.m. So obviously I'm human now. I'll be really really tired. So things like that usually that can be very very challenging. That was very challenging for, for me. For you. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think um, we're in a, we're a work in progress. Oh, yeah. If I want to if I want to summarize what Dr. <laughs> Remy has said. Progress, but it's blink. It's yeah. really blink. I'm so do you but do you see, see hope because I was talking to someone <laughs> and he was saying that the healthcare sector in Nigeria has really really improved from where we were. That we should just give it a little bit time. That it will, you know, that they're investing a lot in the healthcare sector. Is that hundred percent correct? Do you see hope in the healthcare? Sector? I don't think so because I don't think that is hundred percent correct because mm -hmm. you have you still have a lot of doctors who want to just leave. If it was getting better, people doctors will want to stay. But now doctors, I like, I've gotten to this place where they're just fed up and you just want. They just want to. They just, yes, they just Are you sure out. it's just not the bandwagon effect that is worrying the doctors? No. Because there well, are opportunities well, you here. You heard her mention that they did not have a defibrillator, which is actually an essential tool to have in your hospital. You don't have. Have you not heard incidences of where the, the gen isn't even coming on and they're operating on someone? Okay, you know now, light issue is really not a problem now. In, okay, in not anymore. Hospital. Okay. Actually. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you so much, Dr. Oida. Do you guys, I mean, the ladies, do you have any other question? Because no. I think I am done with the question because we're going to have another doctor come in. I think he's going to talk from a different perspective. But I'm happy that because you're a young doctor, 
you know, I've, I met her once and I fell in love with her work ethics is amazing. You know, she pays uh -huh. that attention. She's not, <laughs> she's not your regular doctor that will just abandon you by the wayside, you know. And I thought it would be nice to hear from her, um, her perspective, you know, the experience working in a Nigerian hospital so that people that are listening will definitely start, I mean, start to put things in place, you know. So thank you so much, Dr. Thank Remy, you for, for coming. Me. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Thank All right, you. so when we go, uh, when we come back from the break, Dr. Emeka will join us. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.